While sluggish on matters of policy, purging the party of left-wingers has been a task taken on by Keir Starmer's team with real vigour. Up to now, that's mainly involved kicking out ordinary members and the former party leader. Now, according to the BBC, the Labour right are organising to remove other left-wing MPs. The BBC report that Taiwo Oetemi and Zara Sultana, who both represent Coventry constituencies, could face deselection before the next general election. The article cites a number of reasons that CLP members are supposedly unhappy. Some constituency Labour Party members in Coventry were left deeply unhappy at the candidate selection process during the 2019 SNAP general election. There were claims it was a stitch-up and suggested the National Labour Party had imposed candidates loyal to the then leader Jeremy Corbyn in the two Coventry seats left vacant by the retirements of the long-serving MPs Geoffrey Robinson and Jim Cunningham. They also report some members claim the election results were an indicator that Coventry voters were also unhappy with the choices of Labour candidates as they held on to the two seats by a whisker. So they're saying the fact that the election was closer than 2017 was because of the, the left wing candidates, not because of Labour's Brexit position or anything like that. They also said some senior members of the CLP in Coventry South have also grown increasingly frustrated at Miss Sultana's habit of speaking out against the party leadership and causing controversy, such as when she was pictured with anti-police banners at a rally recently, something she later apologised for. A similar story this week was run by Jewish News. They highlighted Zara Sultana, Sam Tarry, Ian Byrne and Abzana Begum as potential targets for deselection. And they ran with some more comments specifically about Zara Sultana. So they reported two local members who spoke to Jewish News accused her of being more concerned with winning over the support of students studying at the local Warwick University rather than improving relations with many in her CLP. Another member said her views on issues such as Israel prevent strategy and other issues did not chime with the views of the vast majority of people in Coventry. They added, despite having Zara Sultana as our MP, the local party is a remarkably moderate one and is fed up with her antics. Local party sources confirmed that the view amongst the majority of branches in the constituency was to go for a short list of more than one name. So that would mean having a selection where it is you know, potentially the incumbent Zara versus another candidate, or I suppose they could even have a short list without Zara on it at all. Aaron, what do you make of these stories? I've had a number of sources tell me that, you know, this comes from the leader's office and it's being signed off allegedly by people like Luke Akehurst. You've got somebody who works under Luke Akehurst called Matt Pound, who worked on the Starmer leadership campaign. He's he, he's working on removing these these left wing politicians, often left BAME politicians. What I worry about, Michael, is if you say this, it becomes somehow you're, you know, it's an evil thing to say. But it is deeply concerning the Luke Akehurst, who, who, who his job is as an, a, a lobbyist for an Israeli NGO, he's also an NEC member. And now we're looking at allegations of him looking to systematically remove those MPs critical of Israeli policy. I find that remarkable. Just change the words around. Russia. Let's say you had a Labour NEC member who was working as a lobbyist, pro-Russian lobbyist. I'm just saying Russia. You know, it could be any country. And they were working to remove AIM MPs or minority MPs who disagreed with his views on Russia, who he kind of, whose interests he represents. We would say that's a scandal. You know, we're talking about corruption right now. That to me seems pretty remarkable that you have somebody representing certain political interests in their country and in, in some ways, you know, undermining political opponents. Now, Let's see how the story develops, because at the same time, it's going to be hard to do that with Zara Sultan or Apsana Begum because they're Muslim women. And if you look at it from a, just a strategic point of view, the Muslim vote is hugely important for Labour. And they can just, you know, they can dismiss it at their peril. They, they, they sort of did that with Batley and Spen, and they almost lost the seat. Now, people can say, well, they kept the seat. They kept the seat, but they kept it with several thousand in 2019. And in a by-election, they kept it with several hundred. So that's a very dangerous strategy to pursue. I think they'll go for it. You know, who will they be successful with is a separate question. I think Sam Tarry, similar story. Um, uh, you know, there's there's bad blood between him and sort of West Streeting supporters in that neck of the woods in um, Ilford, I believe. So I, I would say that uh, of all the left MPs, yeah, they're going to try it with five or six MPs, maybe success, be successful with one or two.
And the thing that will be pushing it back will be the, the, the public response. And, and what really makes me sad, Michael, is we've got COP26. I don't believe Keir Starmer went to COP26. Maybe he did. I, I, I can't see any evidence that he did. I hope he did. It's really important. The next one's in Egypt. It's a lot easier to go to the one in Glasgow. He didn't go there. Meanwhile, his minions are working on removing socialist left-wing women as MPs. I find that really, not just concerning politically as a journalist, I find it really sad. So we'll see. That's what they want to do, Michael. And like I said, it comes from the top. It is, of course, notable that of the five people suggested for deselection in these two articles, three are women of colour. Labour Muslim Network have suggested Islamophobia could be at play. They tweeted the following about the Jewish News article we, we showed you before. The piece twists valid concerns about prevent policing and foreign policy to paint a picture of Muslim politicians as extreme and obsessive, where other MPs might have strongly held convictions informed by personal experiences. Muslims like Zara Sultana don't get that luxury. You know, this is an element of the story that you mentioned, Aaron. I assume there are undertones of Islamophobia here. At the same time, my experience over the past five years means I am reluctant to point to Labour Party members who want to replace their MP. Obviously, I 100% disagree with them in this case and say, oh, you're probably motivated by racism because we saw it with Louise Elman and we saw it with Luciana Berger where people were saying, oh, it's these horrible anti-Semites that want to replace their MP where I think that was just because they had right-wing politics. Presumably, the people in this CLP would say, well, we want to get rid of Zara Sultana because she has left-wing politics. It's got nothing to do with her, her ethnicity. I don't know. How, how would you sort of navigate that, that somewhat complex situation? I support mandatory selection. I think every MP should go through a process of mandatory selection before a general election. But what we have to respect here is people like Zara Sultana or Apsana Begum are anti-war, anti-war on terror, which I think many people viewed as Islamophobic. And of course, the Labour right was in power when those things happened. Anti-prevent oversaw that, for instance. And they view those as perfectly legitimate things to have done. And so it does have a, it does adopt, of course, an Islamophobic element, Michael, because of course most Muslims think that the war on terror and invasion of Iraq was was uh, insane and evil, which it was. Uh, are they trying to remove them because they are Muslim women? No, they're not. And I think that's a really important thing to say because equally they're going after Sam Tarry. Why? Because West Streeting has a beef with him, and West Streeting's allies in Ilford have a beef with him. They suspended Jeremy Corbyn as a Labour Party MP. He's now a Labour Party member. He's still not got the whip as a Labour MP. You know, he's not a Muslim woman. So you're right. This is not, let's identify the Muslim women and get them out. Because if these were Muslim women with who were pro-war and, you know, pro-occupation of Iraq and, you know, pro-prevent and, you know, not remotely critical of the police and favoured Blairite policies on initiatives with regards to healthcare and, you know, love the city of London and take trips with Labour Friends of Israel to, you know, to Israel every summer, they would have no problem at all. It's because of the political substance of their positions. Now, that, that is related to the fact they're Muslim women, but they are two separate things, Mark. Also going back to the, um, the, the media coverage of this, we talked about the Jewish news. There was also the BBC article, which I just found unbelievable. I've never read an article, Michael, in the BBC where not a single source, not a single source was named. Who told the journalist this? And the fact that landed in the BBC on the website, retweeted by Koonsberg, that's why I sincerely believe it's an operation coming from the top. Well, I know it is. I've been told that by multiple people, but that corroborates it uh, because that is not normal. That is not usual. And I think we'll see a lot more of it. 